for Australian Shepherds in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today we're going to show you what we were talking about, building connection with your dog. I posted a video the other day of my adult dogs out on a hike with me that sort of shows the end result of what you can have when you have connection with your dog and you can get that connection, no treats. I do not have any treats. Basically, what you want to do when you get your puppy home is to spend some time with the puppy. That sounds like a no-brainer, but it's the type of time that you're going to spend that's really important. You need to spend some time just sitting quietly with your puppy, not trying to give it commands, not trying to train it any behaviors. And you want the puppy to just explore you and just figure out who you are and what you are. So, but I do have boundaries that I set with my puppies when I'm sitting with them. One of the things they're not allowed to do is bite me, chew on me, pull on my clothes, uh, bark in my face, jump in my face, that sort of thing. However, puppies use their mouths as hands. They don't have hands, so they use their mouths. And you'll see them explore their environment through their mouth. So if a puppy wants to gently mouth me a little bit, I will let the puppy do that. One thing, if you never let your puppy, and this is just me, this is my opinion, and I'm um, not, you know, I'm not giving you advice about bite, letting your puppy bite you or anything like that. What I'm trying to say is dogs need to learn bite control. And they learn that in the litter. They learn bite control with other dogs. If they're playing and they bite too hard, then the other puppy will scream and protest, and that signals the brain of the puppy to stop doing that. So if this puppy right here, he's exploring my hand with his mouth, but if he was to bite down on my hand, then I would squill and, and, and stop having interaction with him. And that teaches them what's called bite control, that if they put their teeth on human skin, they're not to do it in, a, in an aggressive, tight, hard bite. And this is controversial, so I'm not giving you advice to let your puppy mouth you, I'm just saying what I do. Um, but if you never do that, if you don't teach them how fragile your skin is, then if they do bite someone out of fear or uh, they're asleep and a kid steps on them or whatever and they come around, this is when they're adults, they come around to bite, then they already know that human skin is fragile and that they're not allowed to bite hard. If they're never taught not to bite human skin hard, they're more likely, in my opinion, to... Okay, to so we're starting to establish what we want, what we expect from our puppy when we're sitting with the puppy. That is, you're not going to pull on my clothes, you're not going to pull on my socks, you're not going to pull on my skin. You, you've got to be respectful towards me. And basically, I'm not going to really say a whole lot to the puppies. You notice I haven't said anything to them. I've been talking to you, but I'm not talking to them. I'm just letting them sort of explore me and figure me out. Now, to build that connection and that desire to follow, because we're going to start doing follow next when they get a little bit bigger, I do a simple little exercise where I basically pick up the puppy and I set it away from me and then I put my attention on a different puppy. And that puppy can go off and walk around or whatever, and I'll wait for it to work its way back to me, like here's the puppy that I just set away from me. And he came back to me, and he licked my hand. And that's called opposition reflex. When you move the puppy away from you, its reflex is to come back. Like this is the puppy that I just had leave me. I just took him away from me and now he's back. So this is something that a breeder can do with their litter, is just sit with the puppies and set them away from them and let them come back. And when they're really small, they may not come back, they may go off and do something else. But what I've done is I've removed all the toys except for this one. I have one toy in here in case I have one that really, really, really wants to mouth me and won't give it up, then I'll use this toy. I'll say, okay, you can chew on the toy, but you can't chew on me. But you see, these puppies are being close to me, but they're not using me as a chew toy or a tug toy. You know, I, I did this actually earlier today <laughs> and tried to do a video, but it didn't come out real good, so I'm redoing it. So they've had a little of this already. So I'm going to take each puppy, pick it up, and then set it down. 
And that just seems so simple, but it's a really good exercise. Pick it up, put it down. That's an exercise in who's in control. It's a very gentle way to kind of show them, hey, guess what I can do? I can pick you up and I can set you down. And that just seems so trivial, but it, it really is important. Now, especially if you're dealing with a large breed dog. If you're dealing with a dog that's going to be 150 pounds or 100 pounds or whatever, while it's little, pick it up, pick it up a lot and, and put it down because they don't understand. So pick your puppy up, set your puppy down. This is, if you have a litter, pick each puppy up, set the puppy down. Pick the puppy up, set the puppy down, just like that, up, down. I'm not holding the puppy to me, I'm not, I'm just, it's up and down, up, down, up and down. And this is super important if you're, if you have large breed puppies, because as they get bigger and bigger, they don't realize that you can't do that anymore. And it's, it's a gentle exercise in who's in charge. And when you can pick up an animal, you can pick up a, a dog. We do it with the baby horses. We pick them up off the ground. And that is significant to them, that you can actually pick them up and control them that way. So, so the first few times you sit with your puppy, just sit quietly. And as long as the puppy is being good and calm and quiet, you can pet the puppy, stroke the puppy, Here's one that has my toe, so I'm just going to take him off my toe. And I'm not scolding. So basically what we are trying to do is establish connection. And I'm doing that by just being with my puppy. Now I'm doing it in a small space. I'm not going to do this in a room or out in a big yard because there's too many other things for the puppy to get interested in and look at. So I want to be the most interesting thing in the puppy's environment. And I want to be that without treats. We'll introduce treats later. But I want the puppy to just be interested in me for, for me. Now it's different in my situation right here. I have, I'm doing it with a litter of puppies. So they have each other to sort of play with and, and um, to, distract, to distract them from me. So one thing a lot of times people will say, when I get home, when should I start training my puppy? How much time per day should I spend training my puppy? The answer to that is you are always training your puppy. Every time you interact with an animal, you are training that animal. So you want to be mindful of what you allow the puppy to do. If I can't sit on the floor with a dog and not have it jumping on me, ripping at my hair, pulling on my clothes, uh, then I don't have control, I'm never going to have control or respect from that dog. And the way we get it with the puppies is in a, just a very gentle way. Here's how you behave when you're in my presence. You don't use me for a chew toy. You don't pull on my clothes. You don't bark in my face. You don't pull my hair. Then you, once you have that relationship established that you are in charge, they are not <laughs> in charge then you can actually start the formal training. So thank you so much for watching this video. We're up to about 230 subscribers right now and I really do appreciate that. We're very, very excited about bringing our message and our training to you and having you join us on raising our, our litters. And for my puppy people, all of these puppies, well, all of Blue's puppies are reserved and the other two are just about to be. So this is for you and this is for everyone who has a puppy of any breed or is planning on getting a puppy of any breed. We'll be keeping this little girl. I think I'm going to call him Nikita or Flame. I haven't made up my mind. If you have a preference, you can put it in the comments, although I think everyone should name their own puppy. but. I'm thinking of calling her Nikita or Flame. And I'll be keeping her. Okay, now notice she's crying. Notice she's crying. I'm going to hold her until she stops crying. If I set her down, nope. If I set her down when she's crying, I will have taught her to cry to get her way. I'm not hurting this puppy. I'm just holding her. She doesn't want to be held. She's a little bit scared. So I'm just going to hold her until she quits. And she might really get going. I mean, they'll really well. 
Oh, I almost started to put her down, she started to cry. And I'm not gonna, I'm not going to soothe her, oh, it's okay, none of that. I'm just waiting for her to quit. Because that's just a little fit. That's a little puppy fit. I'm just gonna wait. This is things that are gonna happen, that your puppy's going to cry when you pick it up. Maybe. <laughs> you done? She has to stop. We're going to wait. We'll wait all day if we have to. I'm glad she's doing this because this is showing you what you do. Don't soothe your crying puppy. You know, don't talk to it or give it any kind of special attention. She basically just doesn't want to be held. She's protesting that. She's going to get worse, maybe, before she gets better. But this is important to get this handled now, and not when she's six months old. Because this is her deciding what she wants. There. That right there, that simple little thing, what seemed like no big deal. If, if she would have cried and I would, oh, and put that puppy down, she goes, I'm in control. Little things like that are what establishes who's in charge. I wasn't hurting that puppy. I wasn't, all I was doing was picking her up and holding her. So I'm going to pick this one up and see what we get. And I don't hold him for real long and I would have put her right back down. There you go. Usually when I'm doing the pick up and put him down, I just pick him up, put him down, pick him up and put him down. And that is why. That's why I do that is because you want to beat them to the punch on the crying, on the protesting. So when they're real small like this, pick them up, put them right down, pick them up, put them down, right? So, but if you get one, if you, as soon as you pick it up, if it starts to cry, then it just has to stay with you. So we are establishing who's in charge and believe it or not, dogs want you to be in charge. They don't want to be in charge. If they get in charge, then they become very neurotic, very demanding. They're looking for a ceiling that doesn't exist. So right here, right now, you can see everybody's settling down because they know they're in the presence of someone who is in control, someone who's taking care of them, someone who's watching over them. So establish the connection with your dog. No treats, just spend time, spend calm time, set the boundaries, no chewing on me, no barking in my face, no crying when I pick you up. And once you have that, then you can start formal training. So thank you very much for watching our channel. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and we will catch you on the next video.